This programming is sponsored by the Dan L. Duncan Comprehensive Cancer Care Center at Baylor St. Luke's Medical Center. Offering comprehensive cancer care that is compassionate, personalized, and driven by clinical research. More at stlukeshealth.org slash cancer. This is the Engines of Our Ingenuity, made possible by the friends of KUHF Houston. Today, Robert Grosstest, Roger Bacon, and Cyberspace The University of Houston's College of Engineering presents this series about the machines that make our civilization run and the people whose ingenuity created them. Robert Grosstest was born in 1168 and educated in the Cathedral School at Oxford in medieval England. He was as near to being a scientist as that world had to offer. When Oxford became a university in 1215, he was its first chancellor. Grosstest was an Aristotelian in a Platonist world. Historian Margaret Wertheim tells us he lived a very strict monastic life, but he had Aristotle's talent for scientific observation. He looked for God's perfection, but he did so in the physical world. For Grosstest, God was light. Understanding light meant understanding God, and since light followed the rules of Euclid, the way to light and to God was through geometry. It was Grosstest who first figured out that a rainbow wasn't just reflected light, it was refracted light. Light is bent in the mists that form rainbows the same way it's bent in a pool of water. Roger Bacon was Grosstest's student. He created less science than Grosstest, but he was a powerful champion of his ideas. After Grosstest died, Bacon set out to convince the papacy that science and math were proper arms of theology. To make his point, he described wonders that would one day flow from science. Self-propelled vehicles, lamps that wouldn't burn out, flying machines, explosive powders, better medicine, longer life, high-yield agriculture. But primarily, Bacon talked about optics. He predicted telescopes and eyeglasses. Eyeglasses were first made in Italy a few years before he died. The rest of his dreams all came to pass much later on. His life was really about visual realism. He said God should be shown to the faithful in the most realistic possible way. Up to then, religious art was mnemonic. A rough image of a saint or event simply reminded people to think about Sebastian or Jonah. Now Bacon called for geometric figuring, three-dimensional realism that would bring saints to life on church walls. As if on cue, the walls of the new Basilica of St. Francis at Assisi fairly danced with prospective paintings. Events from St. Francis' life came alive in the place. It was one of the most popular tourist attractions of its age. It would be 150 years before the rules of perspective were formalized, yet the seeds of Renaissance art had been sown. Wertheim comes to an odd conclusion about Bacon. His fusion of art and geometry, his insistence on compelling realism, has finally brought us to the disembodiment of light flowing on the networks. Bacon's realism has helped set in motion a process that's led all the way to 21st century computer graphics. By a strange trick of illogic, realism has led all the way to the ultimate inner reality, the ultimate unreality of cyberspace. I'm John Leanhart at the University of Houston, where we're interested in the way inventive minds work.